In part 3 of our 6 part series, we'll add the ability to rotate multiple objects to our solver and we'll take a look at how to randomize the initial rotation. Let's jump right in. Alright, so let's see if what we have so far is working with multiple objects on our curved paths. So let's now make multiple copies of our circle up here. And we'll grab a duplicate and on our duplicate we'll crank up the uniform scale and the number of copies to 4. And at the moment the radius is kind of growing exponentially, but I do want even spacing between the copies. So let's grab another line and on that line we'll create three points. Uh, sorry, down here and have a length of zero. So they're all in the same place. Let's add a wrangle and on the wrangle we'll set a p scale and set it to one plus the point number multiplied by a uh, gap that will determine so let's create that slider, do another copy to points to check what we have. And let's see what that looks like. So we do have our P scale, the gap is zero. So they're all on top of one another. Hit shift W to see the wireframe. And if we crank up the gap, to maybe 0.5, we do have uh, three lines now with even spacing. So shift W to jump out of wireframe. Let's go back to the first frame, reset our solver. And that is working with our three rolling spheres. So the Objects are all rotating on our path and it's looking quite good. So since we have a smaller radius in the middle, our outer sphere needs to travel a bit faster than the inside one. So now let's quickly take a look at how to change the uh, curve length. So all of our three spheres are moving at the same speed. And since this is a cosmetic change, let's create a subnet for this and dive inside. Oh, at the moment we don't see our lines. So jump back out and let's uh, move the subnet after our copy to points. So we have all our animation path. So next we'll Hit shift W, want to shorten all our three curves so they all have the same length so the balls can be moving at the same speed. Next, let's grab a end sub so we don't need to jump in and out of wireframe mode. Let's check our points. So next we need to figure out the length of all our circles so we'll use a measure sub for that. We'll measure the length and set the attribute to length as well. And now we should have a length attribute on all our primitives. So next I want the uh, smallest circle to have a length of one and shorten the longest one in relation to the first one. So next we'll need a attribute promote to promote our length attribute, which is a uh, primitive attribute. And we'll get the minimum of it. Let's see, we need it. We don't want to delete the original, we want it on the detail. So if we look at the primitives, we do have three links. The shortest one is 
0.14, which is pi, because we have a radius of 1. And the longest one is 6.2. And on the detail, we have the shortest length. So let's grab a wrangle. And in our wrangle, we want to divide the primitive length by our maximum length, which is stored in our detail attribute. So f at length divided by the detail attribute, which is our promoted minimum length. So that's zero and length. Let's see what that does. Nothing yet. Let's set the wrangle to a primitive. So now we can see that the outer circle is two times the length of the most inner circle. So we want to shorten it accordingly. So now let's, and we'll do that using a calf and the length will drive the amount that gets carved out of our path. So what we need is the inverse of that uh, length attribute. So if we write f at length divided by our minimum, we should get the same. And let's now get the inverse of that. And now instead of two on the longest curve, we do have 0.5. So we know that we need to shorten it to half the length of the most inner one. So let's grab a calf. And to do this, we need to run this calf inside a for each connected piece because the calf can't use uh, our primitive attributes. So let's put the calf inside our loop. And now we see that all the curves are carved by the same amount. So what needs to go in here is our primitive attribute. So prim zero prim num is also zero because we're looping over our primitives one at a time. And the attribute is length and the index should be zero. So let's have a look. So the if we enable the single pass, the first one is set to one and that's the opposite of what we want. So we need to do one minus. So let's disable the single pass. So our outer one is half the length. The innermost is one and the second one is in between. So now if we animate our points with the calf outside the subnet, the balls should all move at the same speed. So let's jump out and check. Um, a thing I quickly want to fix is the orientation. So let's do a reverse after our ends. And let's check the animation. All right, so now the balls are moving, but in the opposite direction I want. So let's ghost our path and instead of uh, changing the keyframe values, let's just do another reverse or let's jump in and do another reverse in the subnet. So now that the curves are reversed, the animation is going in the opposite direction. So now let's add some more, set it to five. Let's uh, check again. And this is uh, working nicely. 
All right, so now that we have that sorted, the next uh, thing we might want to do is to give all these objects a random orientation. Right now they're oriented all in the same way. So let's figure out where to do this. This is probably the, the place to do it, where we set our normal and up. So let's do another attribute wrangle, or rather uh, copy this one. We'll add another switch. So we can switch between the static and the random orientation. Let's set our switch to one. So let's change this normal attribute to a random value. Let's pull up the help browser for that and type in sample underscore sphere. So there's a sample sphere uniform function. And this function will give us a random vector with a length uh, smaller than one. So that's important to keep in mind since we usually want our normals and up vectors to be normalized for the cross product to work properly and also for the copy to points. Now, if you want uh, more infos on these various uh, random functions, there's a great video by Javier Toledo. So I highly recommend that you check that out. So let's use that sample sphere uniform and for that we need to insert a random value so we'll do rand and base it on the point number and add a offset to the seat and let's do the uh, same for our up vector Let's change the seat back here. All right, so let's check out what we have. And we do have a random orientation on the first frame. So that's working well. So let's look at the visualizers for a second. And one thing you'll notice is that those vectors are not exactly perpendicular. So let's quickly change that with a double cross product. Let's change our attributes to variables up here and assign them down here. And we'll say that the normal attribute is n and our up attribute will be the double cross product of the normal and will cross that with the cross product of the normal and the up vector. And now both of these should be perpendicular to another. Let's also normalize our up vector. In fact, let's also make sure both vectors are normalized before we put them into the cross product. So now we do have a right angle between those two vectors. So let's see how those spheres with the initial random rotation are doing in our solver. So let's highlight the copy to points, reset the simulation, hit play, and that is not looking good. So something's wrong here. All right, so let's figure out what's going on. So we do have our initial vectors here, the randomized normal and up vectors. So let's look inside the solver. So we get the normal from the previous frame and our up vector. 
we figure out the distance traveled, the axis. Oh, and this is where the problem comes in. So we're rotating around the blue normal vector, but actually we should be rotating around the surface normal. Up until now, both were the same. So in the next part, we'll add a surface normal to our setup so we can roll on display surfaces and we'll extend our setup so it can handle different p-scale values. See you in the next part.